Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at the assessment of the irrigation water, that how it is being carried out. So let's start. So the irrigation facility or the irrigation water that is provided, that is an artificial method of application of the water to the crops. Now the irrigation water supplies, they are ensured to the farmers by the government. When we looked at the canal system, on an existing river, several barrages or the weirs are constructed and through that the water is diverted into the main canal and after that to the branch canal, then to distributary and then ultimately to the minor distributary the last part of the network that is known as the water course or the field channel. Now this water course is having one point that is known as the outlet. So the construction of all of these facility that is the responsibility of the government and specifically of the state government to construct these facility to ensure the supplies of the water to the farmers. So to construct these facility and to maintain these facility up to the outlet point, government will spend certain money. Therefore, this all of the construction, this water supply that is ensured through canals or the reservoirs at the expense of the government. So this huge expenditure which is required for their construction and the operation and maintenance of these projects all of these require the finances now with the introduction of the ensured supplies of the water the farmers are immensely benefited therefore it is only appropriate that they are suitably charged for the water which is supplied to them so this fixation of the charge now this fixation of the charge to the farmers by the government that is known as the assessment of the irrigation water. Now the farmers are charged for the number of reasons for example to recover the cost of the project. So government is spending certain amount of money to recover that cost from the farmers they are charged to collect the revenue so that it augment the state resources that's why also we charge the farmers and also to collect the maintenance cost of these facility and the main motive the prior motive is to put some restrictions on the farmers against the careless and uneconomical use of the water because if we are not charging anything then there will be wastage of water and there will be unnecessary use of the water. So to avoid such problems, there is a certain portion which is kept as the fixation charges. Now this assessment of the irrigation water charges, this can be done in the following ways which are numbered as below. So the first one is the assessment of these charges on the area basis. Second one is the volumetric assessment. The next one, third point is the assessment based on the outlet capacity. Fourth one is the permanent assessment. And the fifth one is the consolidated assessment. One by one, we will discuss all of them. So the first one is the assessment, which is on the area basis. Now in this, the water charges are fixed per unit area of the land, which is irrigated for each of the crops which are grown. For example, let's say this is a random area in which there are different number of crops. Okay, so in a particular season, let's say there is a crop of potato. So the water which will be supplied to this field for the particular crop of the potato, that is already fixed. So let's say the water charges are 200 rupees per hectare okay that is a random figure and this area which is being irrigated let's say that is four hectare that means the total water cost for the farmer in this particular season that will be 800 rupees 
so that means the rates of the water charges they depend upon the cash value of the crop that what is the cash value that what addition are you providing with the help of this irrigation water that can earn the farmers more money so that's why the cash value of the crop that is included what is the water requirement of the crop obviously the crops which are grown in the kharif season they will require more amount of water than the rabi crops and also the time of the water demand with respect to the available supplies in the source for example if you are requiring the water in a rainy season then obviously the most of the supplies will already be up to the maximum limit that's why it would be easier to fulfill the demand which is being generated but if that is demanded in the summer season obviously the level of water in the natural water bodies that will be low because of the heat which is being throughout the season because of that the rates will be higher in a particular season of the summer now as we have seen that it does not matter that how much quantity of water you are actually using so this water charges they are not related to the actual quantity which you are using because of this reason the farmers which hold the land in the upper region of the canal let's say this is the canal let's say this is the canal which is flowing in this direction so if a particular farmer is having the land near to this upper end and a certain farmer is having the land near the tail end so the farmers which are having the holdings in the head reaches they tend to over irrigate their land because here the supplies are insured and they tend to over irrigate that means the wild flooding method of the irrigation that is being adopted at the head reaches now because of this it results in uneconomical use of the available irrigation water and the other problem is that if the more amount of water is being used by the farmers at the head reaches obviously the water which is available for the cultivators at the tail reaches that will be lesser and therefore it deprives the cultivators in the tail reaches of their due share but because of this method being very simple and convenient it is generally used for almost all the irrigation projects in india that is the expense of this method in country like india so that is the first method that is assessment on the area basis next one is the volumetric assessment in volumetric assessment the charges are in proportion to the actual amount of water which is received by the cultivator the drawback of the previous method that the charges were not depending upon the actual amount of water which is being used that has been rectified in this method but to measure that actual amount of water which is being used we require to install the water meters at all the outlets of the irrigation system and if we are not requiring and if we do not want to install the water meters what we can do alternatively the modular outlets they may be provided to supply a specified discharge of the water now what are these modular outlets so let's say this is the canal which is the minor distributary and this is the field course that means the water will be diverted from minor to the field channel so at this point what we are doing we are providing the outlets now at these outlet points what we do we provide certain arrangements in such a way let's say this is a screen so what we do we lift this screen when the water is to be supplied so if we keep this board at a particular level the ensured quantity of water will be supplied throughout the day so that's how we can measure the quantity of water if we are supplying the specified discharge for a continuous period now this method obviously if we are providing the limited amount of water to the farmers it will result in the economical use of the irrigation water and because of that 
it is an ideal method of the assessment of the irrigation water but it is having certain limitations for example the most common one is that it requires the installation and the maintenance of those devices which are measuring the quantity of water which we are supplying because without these instruments without the installation of these devices it is not possible to actually calculate the quantity of water which is being supplied and these devices also require adequate head at the outlet that means there should be certain level of water which should be available at the head of the outlet and also there is a possibility of the water theft because let's say if certain farmer has placed a hose pipe here and because of that what he is doing he is taking the irrigation water without the entry from the outlet point or without the entry in the water meters the other way in which this water theft can be carried out is by cutting off the banks also it is not possible to calculate the actual charges which are to be levied from the farmers for the distribution because let's say from this outlet a certain amount of discharge has been passed on and at the downstream of this there are number of land holdings which are with the different farmers so how much amount of water is being used by the different farmers that is not possible to calculate so it is not possible to calculate the distribution of the charges among the farmers with whose holdings are served by a common outlet because of these certain limitation this method has not been adopted in india so that is the second method volumetric assessment moving on to the next one the next one is the assessment based on the outlet capacity so this is the simple method and it is also workable that depends whether the outlets which we are providing whether they are rigid or semi modular now what are these rigid or semi modular outlets that we will discuss at the later stages of the course but right now you need to understand that the outlet point which we are providing just before the field the point up to which the responsibility or the onus of supplying the water is on the government those outlets if they are rigid that means we cannot change the quantity of water which is being supplied or if we can change that partially that is the semi modular outlet then the channel may run within their modular range that means we need to just calculate the outlet capacity which is being supplied outlet capacity which is being supplied to the farmer the next of the method is the permanent assessment which is also known as betterment levy basis now what is that in this method the farmers are levied at a fixed rate every year for example the government will charge the all the farmers which are present in a particular area which are present in a particular area let's say at 500 rupees let's say 500 rupees per year now it may be possible that the farmer is not using that water but still he will be charged 500 rupees and it may also be possible that the farmer is using the amount of water which is in actual will be costing more than rupees 500 but why do the farmers adhere to this type of assessment the reason for that let's say the farmers which are present in a drought hit area so there may be a possibility of the drought at least 2 to 3 years after every 2 to 3 years so in that case the assured water supplies may be hit and the canals may run dry but this betterment levy that will ensure that the canals are provided with the full amount of water which is required by the farmers so this permanent assessment 
that is assessed only in those areas in which canals are provided as an insurance against the drought that means whether the water is available or not but the government will supply the required amount of water at any cost then the last method is the consolidated assessment now the farmer has to pay a tax on the land owned by him that is the property tax now in the consolidated assessment now this land revenue and the water charge they are combined because that is basically done by a certain department that is the revenue department of the ministry which is under the state government so both of these charges are clubbed together and accordingly the cultivators are charged so basically we are consolidating all of the charges which are to be levied from the farmer that is the consolidated assessment so this has completed the all the types of the assessment of the irrigation water in the next video we will take a look at the different methods of the water harvesting thank you